Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you on this happy Saturday morning? How are you? God is so good. He's mighty. He's awesome in every single way. And I want to talk to you about law and grace can't be mixed. Law and grace can't be mixed. For the law was given through Moses, but grace, the unearned, undeserved favor of God and truth came through Jesus Christ. John 1 17. And if we go to John 1 17, and I'm going to be from the King James Version, John 1 17. So uh, let's go to John 1 17. If you have your Bibles, some of you do come on and you have your Bibles or your cell phone, but John 1 17. God is so awesome. He's mighty in every single way. And uh, I thank him each and every day that he continues to wake me up. Um, it is good news to have a relationship with Christ and to know that he still is alive. We serve a living God, a mighty living God, not a dead God or deceased God, but we serve a living God. And so in John 1, 17, but let us look to the Lord, most gracious, holy God, heavenly father. We thank you on today. Father God, we ask that you will bless your word as it goes forth. Let us be more than just hearers, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, 117, King James Version, but any translation that you can relate to that you have. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And for those under the old covenant, there was a measure of grace as seen in the faith of the few. Genesis 5, 24, 7, 1, and 15, 6. And in the promises of forgiveness, Exodus 34, 6 through 7, and Leviticus 5, 17 through 18. Now through Christ, grace and truth are available to the fullest extent, Romans 5, 17 through 21. Truth is no longer veiled through this types, uh, through the types, you know, like such as the sacrifices. Grace for grace, okay, means that a constant importation of grace and power is given to believers who responds to the grace given them. One blessing after another. Grace is God's initiative. God's initiative. That's grace. God's initiative, love, and favor that make possible our salvation in Christ. That's so much good news. And as we receive him, as we receive him, hallelujah. And then salvation does not come by our efforts efforts to keep the law. Salvation does not come by our efforts to keep the law, but by the Holy Spirit and Christ's grace coming into our lives to regenerate our spirit, to regenerate, to regenerate our spirit, okay, um, spirits, and to recreate us in Christ's image, to recreate create us in Christ's image. So God is a holy God. He's a mighty God. And as I was saying, law and grace can't be mixed. Many new covenant believers still live under the old covenant or they mix the old with the new. They have some grace and some law, but in reality, they have neither one. Grace and law can't be mixed. It can't be mixed. The law demands that we work to keep it. See, that's the thing about the law. We as black people, yes, I'm going to bring this up. We as black people have to work so diligently to try to keep the law and to change the laws. Now, we as black people, why do we have to work so diligently to, to you know, to keep the law and to try to change? The, the important thing is, why do we have to work so hard to change the laws? Why? Because... Black people suffer more in the hands in the judicial system. Black people continue to suffer more. More jail time, more prison time, more death sentences, more executions. And majority of the time, that black man is innocent. The incarcerated black man Majority of the time is innocent. So the law demands that we work to keep it. But we as black people need to demand that we keep it and that we work to change the laws. And we see so many injustices, just like we saw Kyle Rittenhouse get off. 
And the judge, look how corrupt he was from the very beginning. And this young man was allowed to pick his own jury. That's some high privilege. Uh, corrupt mess. I'll say that. It's worse than that, but you have a judge that's allowing the defendant that killed two people and injured someone else to pick his own jury, taking posing pictures with the judge, and the judge scolding the prosecution. But if you look into it a little more, look at what they did to Mr. Robert Kelly. The prosecution got away with everything. And the judge allowed it, right? People lied on the stand just so they can get a conviction, right? So is this getting back at the prosecution for what they did with R. Kelly and to get this young man off? I don't know. And I don't want to say that that's the true statement because people will come and be like, you're wrong. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying what goes around comes around and Look at what happened with R. Kelly. And now you have a judge that's scolding the prosecution in this case, knowing that he should get something. But I want you guys to look up this case on Sagan Penn out of San Diego. I, was re I lived in San Diego for many years before I moved to where I live now. And this was a big, big case. It's controversy. Look it up. Sagan Penn. Pull it up. S-A-G-O-N. And then capital P is in Paul, E-N-N, -N, Sagan Penn. And read that case about how he killed some officers. Read the case. And just read it. It may give you a better perspective or a different perspective. But we as black people have to work to keep the law and work to change laws. It's never going to change for us. It is a racist system with a corrupt judicial system here in America. Yes, it is. And I'm not afraid to say that. And, and, and you know what? The law demands that we work to keep it, and it requires sacrifice on our part when we fail. So we got to stop killing each other, too. We got to stop killing each other. Stop killing each other. Stop slaughtering each other. Wanting to see black men beyond prison walls and things like that. We got to stop it. And Levi... <laughs> We all knew the support, definitely the supporters knew that you were never R. Kelly's cousin. I happened to be watching someone else's channel and they played it because I just, I don't go to a whole bunch of channels and listen to that nonsense rhetoric. And Levi for Kelly has been spewing rhetoric for a very long time. Just rhetoric he's been spewing. And he's never proved that he was R. Kelly's cousin and even on that channel, Choke No Joke, he was trying, he could not prove it. And Bruce was not having it. You guys, you know Bruce was not having that? And how could you say that you don't know when somebody, uh, you don't know that you that's your family? Man, Levi needs to stop it. He's told so many lies. And if you was really R. Kelly's cousin, you would not have been on the ops. You would not have been supping with little Larry. You would not have done those things if this man was your cousin. You either would have remained silent or you would have stuck, stepped up. One or the other. But you would not have been over there supping with the enemy. Just like Drea did. Supping with the enemy. And don't even see that we as black people have to continue to work to keep the law and change the law. And you were over there supping with the enemy because you would say you were angry with other people. And then you said that um, the feds and Homeland Security are the only ones that know your government name, your birth legal government name or whatever, your government name. Why? What about your family, your children, your girlfriend or baby's mother or wife? They don't know your legal name? Then who are you? Who really are you, Levi? Who are you? But I think Bruce told it all. I think Bruce exposed it. You're not R. Kelly's cousin. You're not our family. You're not related to us. We know who our cousins are. And I think Bruce, I don't know Bruce, 
But I, I think that he exposed it for what he is. Levi, you don't know R. Kelly. And, and a lot of us been knowing you don't know R. Kelly. And why would you sit up there and um, sup, with, sup and eat with the ops? And you also, not only did you do that, but there was money that you said you was raising, that dollar for the king, which is really the dollar for the scheme, if you never turned it over to R. Kelly's defense fund or put it on his commissary, you didn't do the right thing with the money. So stop it with all of that. No one wants to entertain none of that. I, I, I don't, you know, people, um, some people ask me to do videos about, you know, things. And I, I you know what, I'm, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. And that's nonsense over there is just nonsense. And, and, and entertaining nonsense is ridiculous. I, you know what, R. Kelly is going to get his due. He's going to get his appeal. He has a good attorney team now. And God's going to see through him through it to give him his freedom back and to restore everything that the devil stole. Because this is so just ridiculous. It's ridiculous to put another black man behind bars. And I'm glad that Julius Jones is not on death row anymore. But even that, he should be, he should be given the possibility of parole, people. So see, we still have to work to change laws. And, and demand that they keep the law, man. How many petitions that have been put out there? How many have people signed? I mean, how many petitions have I signed to try to work to change the laws and to make the government keep the laws that they keep breaking for black people? I'm so tired of that. Yes, we get tired, but that re that tired, that rejuvenation, that rejuvenated energy gets us going again to, to make sacrifices when the law keeps failing us. And so you, you, you know, so the law demands that we keep it. It requires sacrifice on our part and grace uh, on our part when the law fails. And so the apostle Paul taught that works of the flesh and grace could not be mixed or both become useless works of the flesh. You have people working in the flesh doing all types of horrible things. And they just come out here and say whatever they want to say. And pe some people just roll with it. Some people just go along with bafoule and foolishness. They just go along with it. They're easily persuaded, easily led and misled. But you got to stand for what is right. You got to have this sermon and you cannot just go along with nonsense. And, and, it, and you seem like these people just going to, they're going along with nonsense. And they're in the flesh, making up stuff, lying, just making anything up in the flesh, playing with people's lives, playing with people's lives. And although, you know, that Cal Rittenhouse didn't kill any black people, but you know what? It's grief. It got to be grieve, grievous to see the judge doing all that corrupt. Who does that? And, and, and the defendant getting to pick his own jurors? You know that's not going to go over. I'm sure there's appeals in the making right now. And they better be careful. Did you hear what they said? Now the challenge is, or the task, whatever they said, challenge, task, whatever the challenge, is keeping him safe. See, there are some people out here that don't mind. They don't mind, you know, put, insert. They don't mind insert. You know what I'm saying? They don't mind. But anyway, the apostle Paul taught that works of the flesh and grace could not be mixed or both become useless. Grace and flesh cannot be mixed. It's useless. And we see that today, the uselessness of the, the people mixing flesh in and lying or making up stuff. And they know R. Kelly and they are all types of stuff, you know? In the flesh. But it don't mix with grace. People are gonna people are going to be wondering how come God is not showing grace and mercy to them when he gets done scolding them and whooping their behind, yes, into submission, he's gonna get them. We gotta trust God, he's going to get them for everything. See, grace is Jesus Christ working. R. Kelly has grace, people. Yes. Grace is Jesus Christ working, and R. Kelly does have grace. There's a lot of people with grace. Yes, they think he doesn't. 
but our but God has uh, but grace is Jesus Christ working, and R. Kelly has grace. It's been extended to all of us, but look how God's going to work. Look at how Jesus Christ is going to work. You see, he's already extending grace by giving him, by that attorney, you know, joining his team. That, ooh, my hallelujah, that's grace right there, right? And then law is man working. But no man is above God's law. See, men try to become above the law. And they, if you think about it, how many laws have been broken to incarcerate R. Kelly? How many laws have been broken? You can comment and put it in the, the comments below when I'm done with the video. But how many laws have been broken to incarcerate Mr. Kelly? That's man working. Yeah, that's man working in the flesh. That's man working in the flesh, you guys, or ladies. I don't mean that guys is offensive to anyone, but ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, friends and family, that's, that's man working. And they broke a lot of laws to put Mr. Kelly behind bars. But God does not need our help to save us. Mm -mm. He don't need our help. He can use people. You know that God can use people, but he doesn't need our help. God does not need our help to save us. He doesn't. And we can live by faith, living by faith, which we receive God's grace. Living by faith. We have to live by faith. But you know that also faith without works is dead. So that's why we have to continue to demand that they work to keep the law and to change these laws that are so against us and the black man. Black people, black women, black men. You know what I'm saying? We got we to gotta keep working. And we need to not be participating participating in foolishness, you know, and adding to the foolishness of these people that's out here on YouTube doing foolish things and on other social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook, just foolish things, lying, making up things. But we, we can live by faith through which we receive God's grace Instead of living by trying to keep the law in order to soothe God's anger. Some people have it so confused and twisted, right? They don't, a lot of people don't even know the real law. They just think they do. And they think that public opinion is the law. And they think what they're doing is the right thing when they sit up here to put someone on behind bars over hearsay and all of that. God is not happy about these people thinking that they're trying to keep the law by working with a cor corrupt judicial system. Yes. No, God doesn't operate like that. He does not want us going along with things that hurt other people and violating other people's rights to convict someone and thinking that's okay. That's not okay. And he says it right here. trying to keep the law in order to soothe God's anger. They, they, the law, we understand that we're supposed to abide by the man-made laws, right? But when the man-made laws violate people's rights, we should not, excuse me, go along with that. And there's a lot of people went along with 
with with violating the laws. A lot of people went along with that to get convictions. And you know something? It's not just R. Kelly. Larry Hoover, Julius Jones. It's so many men that have been have been killed. I can't even name them all. Black men. And it just keeps going on and on and on. But I want people to know that R. Kelly has grace, has God's grace, just like we do. And we have to believe and live by faith and keep working to change laws, to keep the laws. And you know, that attorney, Bonjean, what did she say? They, got, she, they have to hold the government accountable when they misuse the law. And, and I don't think, I don't know if she said it exactly like that when I was listening to her, but how she said it makes sense you, to us, you know? When they misuse the law and break the law, to convict someone, we got to step in to demand that the law is kept. And when it's not kept, we got to step in even more to hold the government accountable. That's why law and grace can't be mixed. It cannot be mixed at all. It can't be mixed. And there are people trying to mix it, but it cannot be mixed. But um, today's thought is you are accepted, loved, and approved before God because of the sacrifice of Jesus on your behalf. And there are some people out here that have just violated they have violated the word of God, violated the law, and violated all types of stuff. And don't think for one minute that they're not going to be held accountable. And you know, it's unfortunate sometimes that people have to be innocent people, have, or didn't break the law, have to be put to the test in order for people to continually be exposed. And there are people that are still being exposed. Look at Levi, still being exposed. We all knew it, but he got exposed. He got exposed by the family member. He got exposed. And he did not come back on. He didn't. And why would the government care? Why would the government care if he told who, how he was related to R. Kelly? Why would the government care? And if he hasn't broken any laws, Levi, for Kelly... If he hasn't done anything wrong, why would the government care if he came out and told the truth and gave us the information or the public the information of how he is related to Robert Sylvester Kelly? Why would the government care? But you know what? If he lied to the government, then maybe he has something to hide. Because, I mean, think about it. Why would the government... I was sitting there listening to it and I thought... You know, the question came in my mind... Why would the government care if you come out and say how you're related to Robert Sylvester Kelly? Why would the government care? If you came out and told, told that, how you're related. He never told it. He, you know, but why would the government care? Unless you have lied to the government. Have you lied to the government, Levi? Because if you've lied to the government, I guess you would be thinking in your mind the government will care. But if you've told the truth to the Homeland Security and the government, then there is no reason why the government would be upset if you told why, how you're related to R. Kelly. Yes, the government is listening. I'm sure they're listening to my channel. They're listening to everybody's stuff. That's just what they do. But we still have a right to 
uh, our choices, freedom of speech. You're not breaking any laws by coming out, are you? Unless you've made up some stories to the government. Um, how are you related? But you know what? Mr. Bruce Kelly said, you're not related to our family. And he knows that you're not related. And see, if you're related to someone or even, it doesn't even have to be about relation, but it could be about um, trying to prove a point about food or trying to prove a point about, you know, something. You know what I mean? Just anything, trying to prove a point. And someone asks you, you know, what proof you have, what receipts you have, what, how are you related or how, how is this, you know, this or that, you know, show me proof. You say you, you know, say you, say you have a business and nobody knows about it. They want to know proof. What proof do you have? Just come out. It doesn't take rocket science and to go in circles, you know, circles, counterclockwise or the regular clock. It doesn't take that, all of that to prove something. You just either have it or you don't. You have the receipts or you don't. You have the knowledge or you don't. You have the information or you don't. That's the way it is. I mean, like if I had to prove, if I was related to someone, I, it's easy. It would be easy to just say blah, 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 you know, the blah, blah, blah. It would just be easy to say it. But if you have made up some inconsistent stories to the government, are you concerned that you might be caught up in some stuff? Maybe you didn't tell the government the truth when you were submitting all that information. I don't know. But it doesn't take to beat around the bush and go and, uh, you know, dance around you know, dance around the information when someone asks you the question. You're dancing around the question to give the answer. You're going all around in circles. It doesn't take five minutes. If you know you're related to someone, you know that you know that you know, you just tell it. What's the reason? You're saying only the government and you don't want to expose yourself, but guess what? You sure it's only the government that knows your legal name? Are you sure? How many people know you before this R. Kelly situation, before you came out on YouTube? Do those people know your real name? Does your children know your real name? And I'm not trying to put anybody kids in it, no disrespect, but I'm just saying. I would want to know my parents' real name. What about if you, you know, as the child's mother? I would want to know who I'm dealing with. I'm just saying, and I'm not trying to bring anyone's children, so no disrespect, but I'm just saying your family should know your real name and you should be able to give an answer to something like that because it's not hard. It's simple. It's not hard and it's no disrespect to you in any shape or form. No disrespect. But if that's your cousin, as you say, even though Bruce debunked it and said no. Why wouldn't you, excuse me, why wouldn't you say how you know him? You know, uh, the relationship, not know him, excuse me, but the relationship. But also, is there a beef with you that you went against? him and you sup with the enemy I don't know but anyway law and grace can't be mixed okay and if you want to dig deeper into God's word study Romans 3 28 and Galatians 2 16 law and grace cannot be mixed and a lot of people keep trying to mix it up together and it is not working but believe me God extends his grace he has extended his grace under the New Testament to all of us and people that violate the law 
and violate God's word and try to mix law and grace. And you've seen it out here on YouTube, people trying to mix law and grace, trying to act like people don't have grace. But R. Kelly, you still have the grace of God. And I want you to know that, my brother. You know, I want you to know that you still have the grace of God. If there's any comfort in you knowing that even though you're behind prison walls right now, incarcerated, I want you to know that you still have the grace of God. Of God. And even though people try to say, mix the law and grace and try to take away, God did not throw you away. God still loves you. And God is going to see to it that everything is restored back to you. And maybe even more. He used you just like he used Job. Look at how he allowed the devil to come in and do that to Job. And he restored Job. Man, he restored Job and all those fake people that was around Job. You know, remember that? They was, oh, they, you must have did something wrong. You must have been guilty. I mean, listen to the things that the people were saying about Job and his friends and then the wife. Then you should just curse God and die. All types of things. But Mr. Kelly, hang in there. You still have favor. You still have the grace of God upon you. Hang in there. Don't listen to those naysayers out there. You already have the discernment that God has given you to hang in there and you know what you got to do in your spiritual walk and relationship with Christ. Don't give up. Hope, keep hope alive. Don't give up. Stand on the promises of God, Mr. Kelly, and don't give up. Don't listen to the naysayers that have tried to mix grace and law because it does not work. And I want to just say, God bless you all for tuning in. And tomorrow uh, we will be talking about healing the soul of a woman, chapter three. And this is where we're going to be tomorrow. Chapter three, God wants the wounded. Chapter three, he wants the wounded. The unwounded life bears no resemblance to the rabbi. And that's a quote from Brennan Manning. But chapter three, God wants the wounded. Okay, he wants the wounded. Yes, he does. And everybody that's been wounded, that's living a life of Christ, that is trying to live righteously and striving for a relationship with Christ, God wants the wounded. He wants to heal your heart. But in order to do that, we have to get to the wounds, the emotional wounds that so easily beset us and hold us back. God wants the wounded. And so tomorrow, live at 3 p.m., uh, Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in so we can talk about uh, Chapter 3 in Healing the Soul of a Woman and any translation of the Bible that you have so that we can talk about this. God wants the wounded. Uh, coming from uh, Joyce Meyer. Um, you know, Joyce Meyer is the author of this book that we're studying. And, and I'm so excited to bring you this. Uh, hopefully we can cover more than one chapter maybe tomorrow so we can uh, keep moving forward and, and everything. And I want to thank everyone that joined last Sunday. It was a joy to see you. It was a pleasure. It wouldn't have been the same without you. And so I thank God for you, each and every one of you. And I hope to see you tomorrow. I know this is the weekend before Thanksgiving. I do understand that. But whether you tune in or not, or even if you're in the bushes and you're listening, but I'm still going to go live with the word of God. Uh, we, the word of God will still go forward. It has to go forward because there's someone out there that needs to hear a word from God. They need to hear some type of inst inspiration. And maybe you have been wounded and, and you don't want to come forward and that's okay. But I hope that by us talking about it and, and introducing it and just getting it out there that you still will be willing to tune in. And I pray that each and every one of you have a beautiful, blessed day in the Lord. But remember, law and grace cannot be mixed. Um, God bless you on today. Oh, you know, I almost forgot something, but um, uh, if you want to dig deeper into God's word, study Romans 3.28 and Galatians 2.16. God bless you all on today. Peace out. <laughs>